perhaps they will be a benefit to you. I was given the title tonight, How Men Get Gory When Man Gets the Glory. Again, I had a difficult time trying to find out how to make this work tonight, but uh, right. I, I'm going to do my best. Yes, sir. I told Brother Clear I would do my best, and uh, actually, I, actually, uh, I was thinking that I was supposed to speak tomorrow night because uh, it says on my sheet, and Brother Clay said it's his mistake. Say, he put Tuesday down instead of Monday. So, uh, so he said, you are scared to speak for 30 minutes on Tuesday, June 24th. <laughs> now, now, but somehow or another, I, I, knew, I don't know how it, how it happened, but uh, you see, on the 23rd of June, that has always been my birthday. And today is my birthday, so, birthday. so I knew it had to be a mistake somewhere there. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're going to do our very best. Amen. And as as uh, I tell Brother Clay, I always like to do some, do some a little bit of a background uh, uh, work on what I'm going to talk about because, and I need to do that so when I get to my defining scripture then you will know, have some idea of why we say what we say and where we're trying to go right. with our mess tonight. Right. And so I have, they have given me Acts the 20th chapter. I think it's Acts the 20th chapter. Acts the 12th chapter. Verses 20 through 24. And let me read that to you. Quickly, Acts the 20th, 15th, 12th chapter, I'm sorry. The scripture says, And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him, and having made blasphemous the king's chamberlain, their friend desired peace because their country was nursed by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. So I, I, I've entitled what I'm going to talk about tonight, the death of Herod. And in order to tell you, uh, uh, to help you understand what we're talking about, the verse 20 says that they were displeased, those of Tyre and Sidon were displeased, rather Herod was displeased with, with uh, with uh, Tyre and Sidon. And I'm trying to figure out why Herod was displeased with them. You know, I, I've been working on this thing for a long time, and, and finally today it dawned on me uh, that the church is doing some study. And so hopefully what we put together tonight will help you to understand verses, uh, this particular verse yes, sir. when we get to it. Right. Now, and let me give you some background of Herod. Now, the circumstances that we have here, in the height of Herod's power and his haughtiness, he is suddenly cast down while raising himself arrogantly against the majesty on high. Herod is brought low and put to shame by many of the people who were flattering him and hailing him as a god. These features and attitude had all the elements of a most solemn tragedy. For the message of divine judgment smites him 
and he perishes a miserable death right away. Right. And in the book of Acts chapter 8, there was a great persecution of the church. Yes, sir. Come on. By occasion of the persecution of the church in Jerusalem, the church being planted in Samaria by Philip the deacon, and in verse 14 of chapter 8, Peter and John came down to confirm the work and the work grew in Samaria. Chapter 11, verse 8 and 19 says, They which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. In chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, about that particular time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Yes, sir. After Stephen's murder, Caligula persecuted the Jews with the ascension of Claudius. They had a time of comparative peace, the church in Jerusalem. But this brought about the Herodian persecution of the church. The Jews put themselves in the hands of Agrippa, who was the appointed successor to Herod Philip, with the whole Syrian province under him. By their persecution, Caligula and later under Claudius, so that he was equal in power to his grandfather, Herod the Great. And his grandfather, Herod the Great, was a shameless blasphemer, and he feared neither God nor man. The Jewish rulers incited him against the Christians, and they put Peter in prison, chapter 12, chapter 12 and verse 4. And Later on, Herod, they looked for Peter and couldn't find him. So what had become of Peter? Now I want to go back to chapter 12 here. In chapter 12, in the verse 20 again says, Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord, that is the folk of Tyre and Sidon, to him, and having made blasters of the king's chamber, their friend desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. Now, the men of Tyre and Sire had, it seemed, they had offended Herod in some way or another. And now, uh, because Tyre and Sidon was under the yoke of the Romans. Now, now, while they were under the yoke of, yoke of the Romans, Herod was in charge of the Roman province, and also he was in charge of Tyre and Sidon, two cities. Now, the reason, according to the pulpit commentaries, Tyre and Sidon, they had offended Herod some way or the other. In the, in the commentary, it doesn't tell us exactly what the reason for uh, of offending Herod was. But Herod was offended with the folk in Tyre and Sidon. And because of that, and because of that offense to them, the Tyre and Sidon, the men of Tyre and Sidon, they wanted to get in the good graces of Herod. So what they did, they made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their spokesperson, you know, they need the favor of Herod because Herod, they thought, no doubt, would would, would, would stop their uh, expectation of of grain and see Tyre and Sidon. They were a trading city, and all they had to offer was was grain. And so they were afraid that Herod was going to stop their expectation. And so that's why I think the verse 12 says, and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord. That is, the men of Tyre and Sidon came to Herod with one accord. And when they came to Herod, they had made Herod's chamberlain their spokesperson. Now, a spokesperson is an individual that, 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 that makes things all right. He is sort of a go-between. And what, what, what Chamberlain did, he was to go to Herod and try to make peace with Herod on behalf of, the, of Tyre and Sidon. Now, 
Now, uh, uh, when he did that, and the reason why they wanted peace there because uh, uh, the folk of Ty and Sidon, they wanted peace because they, they did not want Herod to cut off their, their way of living, their livelihood, and their food. And so, and so uh, uh, Blaster, they made Blaster the king, uh, the, the king Chamberlain that go between to speak to Herod on this accord. Now, all this won't be found in the, in the commentary, but, but as the preacher was talking about, the Bible teaches us about necessary interests and these kind of things. And so we understand here, we should understand here, that the, the, the Chamberlain, he was a high official of Herod's court, and he was, and he was the, the, the attendant of Herod's household, and he could talk to Herod and make things right for the people of Tyre and Sidon. And so that was his job, because Herod was bound to let Tyre and Sidon know that he was displeased with them on account of whatever uh, had transpired between his, his kingdom and the folk of Tyre and Sidon. And so Herod wanted to make sure that they felt the full force of his wrath. But Blastus, his chamberlain, came to them and talked to them, talked to Herod, to help Herod to understand, uh, to, to put these people back in his good graces. And so then, and so then we understand here, the Bible says here, in, in verse, in, in, in verse uh, 21, he says, upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat up on his throne, and made an oration unto them. Now, also, Matthew Henry's commentary teaches me that, that Herod was a man who loved fine clothing, right. fine dress. Yeah, right. And so Herod, on the set day, Herod came to, to address the people, and he was dressed up in his fine clothes, and, 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 some, uh, and, and poor Pitt's commentary said he was purple, and, 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 and he had some uniform on that is shined like gold. It shined like gold, and, 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 and the people, when they, when they saw Herod come out on that set day in royal apparel, and, and, and Herod made a speech to the people, and, and, I, and I can see old Herod there with, yeah. with, with that audience there, and he made this speech to his people, and I imagine Herod put a lot of sugar on him. Uh, all right. You, 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 you know how, like, 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 like many of our preachers today, Right. Many folk in the church put a lot of preaching on, a lot, a lot of sugar on their preaching and things like that. Well, well. And, and, and so Herod came out there and put all of this sugar, I'm pretty sure, on his speech. Uh -huh. Because the Bible says here, in verse 21, mm -hmm. he gave an oration unto them. Yes, sir. Can you imagine him sat up on his throne and made an oration unto them? No telling what all Herod said about how great he was. <laughs> Because we go back and we look at, in, in Acts chapter 8, he had killed, he had killed Peter, he, he, he killed Peter and John, and now Herod and Noah less probably feeling his Cheerios, so to speak, if I can use that term. And now Herod, is, he, he's a big man in front of everybody now. See, he's dressed in royal pearl, and when he gave this oration, big old speech to them, and the Bible teaches us, teaches us, that when he made this big oration, the people, look at verse 22. He said, the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a God uh -huh. and not of a man. Uh -huh. Oh, I know that made Herod feel some, like he was somebody's man. Yeah. Yeah. He said, he is the voice of a God and not of a man. And, and the Bible says in verse 23, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and was eating the worm and gave up the ghost. Yeah. Sometimes, some, sometimes, brother, we, we, we need to be very, very careful. And, and, I, and I, tell, I tell our folk all the time, don't let nobody make a fool out of you. Well. <laughs> you, you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes I go to fellowship singing and those kind of things. And, and, and you know, we have one singing group get up and sing real beautiful. And everybody be jumping up, women be jumping up, shaking and going on all right. in front of the church and all that kind of thing. And, 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 and you know, in some singing group, they feed off of that. 
they, they love to see that, and then they put a little more into what they're doing than what they ought to be doing, you see. And, 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 and see, they, they, they love all those accolades. They love that kind of stuff. And preachers need to, preachers need to be very, very careful that they don't make, uh, let people make an idiot out of them. You see, you, you see we, 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 as preachers, we ought to be trying to praise God rather than to glory ourselves. So, so he, Herod gave this big oration to the crowd, and the Bible says, what did the Bible say it did? The Bible said immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. Now, the brother was talking about a few minutes ago that he, about the BAs and MAs we got. You, you know, I, I'm like, I'm with you, brother. I, I, I don't really care how many MAs and BAs you have. If you don't bring the gospel and don't preach the gospel, your BAs don't mean a thing to me. Don't mean a cotton-picking thing to me. And, and, and so I pray that I, that, that and, and you know, it, some, some, some preachers, some preachers can't, can't preach unless they get them to tell you about how many BAs they got. And, and not only that, but, 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 but here, let, let, let me take, a, take another look at it. Uh, this thing. I, I, I believe that sometimes we as, as leaders of the church, we sometimes aid them in this kind of attitude because, you, you know, when we get ready to have a gospel meeting, uh -huh. we want somebody who's got MA from this, BA from here, and he got this, and he's got that, and uh -huh. he spent so many years here, and that kind of thing. We need to be careful about that kind of thing oh, instead of giving God the glory for whatever yes. uh, education the individual has. So we have to be very, very careful about this, about this thing. Now, Herod got up, rather, rather, Herod got up and made a great oration there. Now, Herod became bolder and bolder in his wickedness against the church. And he aimed a blow at the church and the very leaders of the church. Killed James and John. Now, now, what happened with Herod here is that Herod, angel of God, struck Herod down because Herod did not give God the glory. That's it. You see, you, you see, Herod no doubt loved all of those accolades. Mm. You, you know how some of us are today? We, we, just, we just love, love accolades and love to hear somebody come and tell us how good you preach. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, sir. All right. Oh, that was such a beautiful lesson. We just eat it up. Failing, now don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes I think we go to the extreme in these kind of, in, in these kind of praising things because the Bible teaches us in, in, in Exodus 20, chapter and verse 5, that God is a jealous God, and God will not allow his glory to be given to anybody else. That's it, that's it. Now, too many, too, too many working in the Lord's church now want to be glorified in the Lord's yeah, church. Yeah, that's right. You see, if some folk in the Lord's church won't do anything unless they can get some kind of glory. Free, now, free. Now, 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 the letter said uh, 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 how men get, what was it, now how did men get the glory, glory, glory instead of giving God the glory? All right. You know, and I, and I just said glory means, now I know I looked it up in the dictionary, it means Blood stained, uh, uh, bloody, mm. but I just said just mean to be messy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I just said mean to be messy. That's you know, in, in the church, see, we get too messy sometimes right. in our relationship and our worship to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We ought to be giving God the glory of whatever God has given us, That's right. That's rather than taking the taking the credit ourselves. Now, 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 many of God's servants today have an attitude in their ministry, in their work, as though they did it all themselves. Yes, sir. Mm. I built this, I did this, so forth, so on, uh -huh. rather than giving God 
the glory. Amen. You see, we, uh, we, we ought to be concerned about giving God the glory because the Bible says God is a jealous God. All right. Now, when Herod got up and gave that oration, I can almost see him up there in his shining and pearl and all his fine clothing and everybody praising him and giving him the glory. And he didn't give God the glory. Now, now, that's why that, 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 that God struck him down. The Bible says immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating the worm and gave, the glory, gave it the glory. You see, God is not going to share. Yes, sir. God is not going to share his yes, glory. He's not going to share his church. Yeah. He's not going to anything that man does yes, with man. And so we need to learn that today. And so learn, learn the sin of accepting divine honor when we are not do divine honor. You see, see, you see, you see, man needs to humble himself in the sight of God. See, Herod wanted to accept divine honor. And when they got up and said, they said here, this is the voice of a God and not man. And because Herod did not shut them folk up, that's a good lesson for some of our preachers today. Sometimes we need to shut some of these women down when they jump up shaking and going on. You need to shut them down. Shaking in front of the men in the church. Oh, say that, sir. Right. Huh? Need to shut them down. Yeah. You see, you see, Herod should have been shut those folk up. Uh, they give him all clothes, all the praise, and didn't give God the glory. Say that. Yes, see, how men get glory when they don't give God the glory. You, you see, you see, brothers and sisters. We are only going to be here for a short time, and we need to get it straight. That's right. Amen. You know, when I was coming up, we used to shoot marbles a lot. Anybody ever shoot marbles? Right. And, 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 and sometime before we started playing marbles, we said, we playing for keeps. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> If I, if I win your marbles, you're not going to get your marbles back. Uh -huh. That's right. you, you see, we need to understand, church, that we are here playing for keep. That's we it. don't have a lot of time to be oh. messing around Amen. here. Amen. We need to give God the yes, glory yes, and the honor. Amen. And so and, and so, in order for, for, for Ty and Sidon, in order for Ty and Sidon to get back in the good graces of Herod, they appointed Blasters, the king Chamberlain, to be their spokesperson for them, to make peace for them, because they needed Herod, and they needed what Herod could do in order for their livelihood. Oh, and and, 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 and sometimes and, and sometime we need to be careful how we, how, how, how we uh, uh, go along with folk just for livelihood's sake, so to speak, oh, you know. And, and, and a lot of preachers, a lot of preachers, I've seen it now. Yeah, I've been preaching for a long time. I've seen it. I, I've seen it, and I'm not saying something I don't know. Oh, I have seen how, how in the church, how folk compensate with those in error, mm -hmm. knowing they're in error. That's it. That's it. But they're afraid to give God some glory oh, and Lord. tell folk that they need to straighten up and fly right. We're going to have to start giving God some glory. Yes, sir. The Herod arrayed in his royal apparel. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and, and that's why the angel of the Lord smote him, God, smote him on the spot. That's it. Aren't you glad God doesn't smote us when we mess up? Amen. Aren't you glad? God, Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad? Thank you, Lord. God have mercy on us. God, and so then, so we need to be careful. Now, now, Matthew, the 22nd chapter and verse, they came to Jesus and asked Jesus, his Lord, which is the great commandment? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, the great commandment is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Mm -hmm. And the second is like unto it. Mm -hmm. 
Second lesson, Dasha, did I quote that wrong? Well, it, it's close enough. You know what it means. He said, in the second lack unto it, thou shalt love the Lord thy God all the heart. Let, let me read that. Let, let me get that and read it to you. Matthew 22. Matthew 22, in verse 37. Let me read that right quick. That, Jesus that, said unto him. Jesus said unto him. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. There you go. With all thy soul. With all thy soul. And with all thy mind. Yes, sir. This is the first and great commandment. There it is. The second is like unto it. Right. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah. All right. Now that's what the Lord wants to do. We need to love the Lord our God with all our heart and all of our soul. In other words, that simply means, brother and sister, we don't give anyone else the praise and the glory. Amen. Now it's not all right. To, I think it's all right to, to, to let someone know that they're doing a good job. Yes, sir. But, but, but sometimes I feel as though we go overboard and, and, and see, a lot, a, lot of us, a lot of us as preachers, they, they love that kind of stuff. They, they, they love it, you, you, you know. They love it, you know. And, and, uh, and, if they, and if they can't get somebody shaking and bumping and going on, they feel like they ain't done the job. But <laughs> preach the word of God. Yes, sir. Preach the word of God. And I hope and pray, I hope and pray, I know. And I know uh, that uh, uh, I hope I hope and pray that that you have been able to glean something from what I've had to say this evening from God's Amen. word. Amen. But Acts 12, chapter one, that was a tough one there, you you, you know, because I couldn't figure out how to make that work. All right. and, and, but I hope you understand what we're saying here. Right. Uh, 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 Acts 12, chapter and verse verses 20. Read that verse again for me, brother. Acts 12, and verse 20. I got two minutes here. Acts 12, verse, verse 20 again. And Herod, highly displeased with them, okay. of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made a, a, a blast of the king, Chamberlain, uh, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, yes. sat upon his throne and made an oration yes, sir. unto them. All right, all right. Now, if I can, if I can sort of, sort of, put this together, so you can maybe you can get some out of it. It said that Herod was how this people, the people's tie and siding. Now, according to the pulpit commentary, that tie and siding, they had had offended heaven in some order or something. Mm. It doesn't say. But in order for them, for order for the time to get back in the good graces of Herod, they said they made blast of the king chairman, their friend, and they desired peace because mm. their livelihood was at the hand of Herod. Mm. And Herod, and, and they put, 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 put all on the stuff on Herod, made him feel good. And preachers, you got to be careful. Folk don't make make fool out of yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, you you got to be careful, preachers, because some folk will make you make a fool out of yourself. Yeah. Tell you how good you preach, and they know you didn't preach good. All right. And you just eat it up. Yeah. You see, be careful. Yes, sir. And so, and, and so, when when they came out and said it's the voice of a God, not of a man, uh. boy, I do. Oh, heaven. Oh, yeah. It made him feel good. Yes, sir. Made him feel good. And God struck him down because he didn't give God the glory. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 We want to uh, give those an opportunity who have uh, come out tonight. We want to thank Brother Adolphus Smith for that very fine uh, message tonight. Uh, how things get gory when God when man gets to glory. Amen. God should be getting the glory and not man. So certainly we appreciate that very fine message. If you're here tonight and you are not a member